Howdy! Today we're going to be looking at the Zarker J45 disc detainer lock, a 7 disc lock, that we're going to figure out just a few things to complement some of the other super duper existing tutorials about this lock. We'll take a look at where the discs are in the stack relative to the bottom of the actual lock. And we'll take a look at how to grab just the first disc with uh, the help of some common washers and take a look at measuring actually the key cut to find out where our locks um, discs may be relative to the key so we can think about strategies for actually picking this thing. And then we'll take a look at how this can all be applied to an actual open. Yay! There are lots of great tutorials already on uh, opening this particular lock, not least Chris Pick's video, which is uh, a game changer in terms of just accessing how to manage this lock by hand. There are also some super duper tutorials around disc containers in general, not least by a boss named Bill. Uh, if you haven't seen it, John Locke has done a great 3D animation of what's going on inside of a disc container lock. And uh, John Locke also took apart an Amazon Basics lock destructive gutting, which means it ain't going to be the same again, but to show everyone what these little discs are like. And of course, Lock Noob has several great tutorials on disc detainer locks. And uh, today, though, we're going to just start with some things that haven't been covered, which is like, okay, what does it look like down this stack? How thick are these discs? when they're at home and uh, see the difference of the depth from the bottom of the disc stack to the bottom of the lock. There's some space there that's uh, perhaps obvious to you, but something I didn't quite get. And so we can see also how thick or not these discs are. We'll just count them up here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and the very top one's kind of blurry. That's seven. Okay, here is just the tip at the bottom of the stack, pulling up on it. That's a great way to find where the first disc is. What you'll notice, though, is that the pick tip is a lot smaller than the disc opening and a lot narrower. And as just crawl up the stack here, you can see why alignment of the pick relative to these discs is pretty important to be able to grab on uh, to them in order to turn them. Now in other contexts you've probably heard that it's important to just grab the first disc in the stack when you're going to hold tension on that first disc. Look there, right there, that one. And not grab the second one. You can, but it's a little weirder to try to pick. So if you just can grab the first one, well let's see how deep do we go with the standard setting on the uh, Sparrows disc detainer thing. Just going to go counterclockwise on this just because they're all turned clockwise just to see how much of the discage we're getting with this thing. Okay, so how many discs is that? Well, unfortunately we've grabbed two discs here. Check that out. One sec. First one, and then you can see the second one underneath it. Now they've been rotated back to more or less clockwise. So first thing we'll try is putting one washer on the end of this uh, tip. Voila. And just check it again to see how much space that is, is uh, taking up. We're still getting the two discs or the one disc. Counterclockwise just to test how much is being moved. And oh, still have two discs. So next best thing, try another washer of about the same thickness. And this time I've got a smaller washer. I'm going to swap it around so the bigger washer 
the size of the um, casing is on the outside and the little washer is on the inside. Once again testing just to see what we get and success. As you can see we've just moved the one disc which is exactly what we want in this context. The next thing you might be curious about is just how much space there is at the bottom of the lock before you pull up and hit that first disc. So you can figure out what your key is mapping to in terms of being inside a lock. So just grabbing that to find that first lock distance and checking how many little notches we're hitting on the lock. And it's just a little bit over one um, two units there. So we look at the whole lock uh, to get its measurement, and then we check out how deep our distances are here. Because we got one and a bit, so one unit is mm, close to two. And when you're actually sticking those points into those curves probably get closer to two millimeters now. And so that two out of the 7.41 that we saw will give us a sense of how many cuts worth of space the bottom of the lock is taking and let us get to our seven cuts. So from these measures, if we take these and apply them to the key, we can see that we've got the bottom of the lock, which we've seen is not a disc, it's an open space, is a little bit more than one cut's worth of key, followed by two key spaces that translate to two zero-cut discs, followed by four that actually will go into gates, and the seventh is also a zero-cut disc. And what that should mean is that with the zero cuts set at clockwise, they're already in a gate, they don't have to move. We've only got really four discs that we have to move out of clockwise to counterclockwise into a gate, and it should open, which means no counter rotation, which you'll see in other videos, should be needed on this lock. So let's just test that out. Okay. We've got the washers set up. Just put tape on the washers so they don't slide around. That's just gaffer tape. Nice thing is you can get into the lock pretty quickly with a good alignment. We're now pulling back just to find that first disc. It went right past it. So we're going to pull back up just like Chris Book says to do. Grab it. Check it. There, yeah. It's, it's uh, tight against in the clockwise direction. Next one, going all the way back again. Okay, check the first one again. Grab it, grab it. Yep, yeah, okay, it's clockwise. Two, also clockwise. Tight, tight. Go to three, first one to go counterclockwise, a little bit of a click there. This one's four, got that. Five, wham. Six, got that, and then seven should be in the gate, so it should just open, and it does. That's nice when theory meets practice like that. Quick takeaways are the starting disc depth, it's not the base of the lock, we got pulled back. We also tested how to grab just the first disc with the Sparrows tool and how we could use some washers to help adjust the height. And we used some measures to figure out where our cuts are actually, or discs are on relative to the key to see what we need to do. Hope that was useful for you. Thank you, and thanks to Chris Bisco for the coaching, and have a great time playing with your own disc detainer box. Happy first open.